Well, hi and welcome everybody to another Women Lead webinar brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and I'm just really excited about what we're going to be doing today. Um, this is a very informative webinar. Um, you are really in for a treat, and I, I'd like to say that we are ending the year, ending 2020 with a bang as far as our Women Lead webinar series is going. And our webinar today is around an hour. We welcome your questions. Just submit them to me through the Q&A, and I will be glad to, to submit them to our guest um, near the end of the show. So the focus of our webinar today is making difficult conversations safe conversations. And I'm really excited to introduce our thought leader today. Lori Reichel Howe is the founder of Conversations in the Workplace. How's that for the name of a company? Kind of tells you exactly what she's all about, right? And at Conversations in the Workplace, Lori equips managers, teams, and business professionals and helps them learn how to have safe conversations that are transformative and uncover hidden workplace issues. You know, so many times we cover up the things that are going on in the workplace. We don't know how to approach those conversations. And that's what Lori does for us. She is a professional mediator and conflict coach, and she has supported organizations such as SHRM, Pyra, Women in Technology International, the County of Los Angeles, Association for Dispute Resolution, Northern California, San Jose State University, Santa Clara County Office of Education, need I go on, many, many, many more folks. So without any further ado, I am going to turn this over to Lori and just take it away, Lori. Tell us about you. <laughs> Tell us what you've got for us. Tell us, you know, what, what you've got to share with us today. Well, thank you, Patty. It's a delight to be here with the Connected Women of Influence. And I jump at the opportunity to um, just meet with support and advocate women who are women of positive influence and impact. And today, if you work with, live with, or interact daily with human beings, you will need to have difficult conversations. If you're going to develop positive influence and impact, this is a skill that will be critical. Your ability to effectively communicate at challenging times will determine your success or lack of it. And while addressing a concern or talking about an awkward situation where defensiveness might erupt may feel like this, <laughs> like you've just been submerged into a shark tank. And few people want to volunteer to serve as shark bait. Um, today, I will share a communication framework and provide a demonstration of how you can transform a difficult conversation into a safe one. And that's because we all know the impact of strained working relationships. My gosh, increased job stress, frustration, how many of you have ever felt like you're walking on eggshells simply trying to do your job or even if you might be just showing up for a family holiday event <laughs> and i've discovered what keeps people stuck is typically either difficult conversations we are avoiding or else we are holding them but we are not holding them well Okay, so a little bit more, who am I? As Patty shared, I am founder of Conversations in the Workplace. And she gave a bit of my background. And what I do, again, is that I equip business professionals, managers, teams to have those safe conversations. So when we can address issues just such as challenging team dynamics, mismanaged expectations, even good old fashioned bad behavior, then when we can begin to enter into those conversations, we can get issues on the table, 
we can have respectful conversation. And when we do that, we elevate our leadership to the next level. And we're, we, that's because we're able to describe problems in a way that creates solution. And what does it look like what I do? Well, like this. You see, I train people to talk directly to the person with whom they have the concern. And I show them that it's possible to talk to your boss and to help them see that it's possible that team members are becoming silent when he or she asks for feedback. And that from your observations, you believe it's possible that people are interpreting his or her responses to their feedback as defensive or even threatening. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, the conversations that I have helped people have with a fellow coworker may be may look like this, and helping them to help coworkers see that it's possible that the way they are communicating their words, their voice tone, even their physical gestures are coming across to people as an attack. And I help teams to increase their engagement, accountability, and productivity. And that's because they are learning and being equipped to talk about issues that are impacting them and their success. Mm -hmm. In essence, I think what I do is really getting people to safely talk about the elephant in the room. It's a tune-up for team and teams are quite often so relieved when we can finally talk about issues that are hindering them. It really becomes more of a problem solving and that is quite often welcomed. What I find is that what this framework that I provide for people helps them not only in business conversations, but in personal relationships. I've used my safe conversation framework when I'm talking with a friend about a broken commitment, um, or I use it if I'm talking about an issue of concern with a boss. Why do we need safe conversations? Well, because there's a life reality, and that is that conflicts are inevitable. I learned this through my training as a professional mediator and conflict coach, and that's that conflicts are natural occurrences in every human group. They're inevitable in life, and it doesn't take much for us to experience conflict triggers for all of us. Core trigger is unmet needs. Now, here's a picture of someone who needs a deadline to be met and is frustrated with a fellow colleague about that deadline being missed. The fellow colleague is frustrated and has an unmet need. And that's that they needed to be involved in the conversation when the deadline was set. They needed to have access to the resources that were needed and promised in order to meet this deadline. Mm -hmm. So unmet needs quite often are about competing needs. Another trigger is whenever our goals are blocked. Now, when someone or something is standing in the way of you meeting your goals, and for some of us, this can happen daily. <laughs> I don't believe I'm the only one who finds my goal of getting somewhere on the freeway blocked, and it's easy to assume that the problem is different people driving like idiots. So when our goals are blocked, how we perceive our situation May, may not be quite fair. Anytime we feel disrespected or devalued, our whole sense of security gets this 911 alert. And that's because if all it takes is for us to perceive we are disrespected and we are <laughs> at our worst. You see, respect is like air. If it's taken away, it's all people can think about. Mm 
the instant people perceive disrespect in a conversation, their interaction is no longer about the original concern. It becomes about defending dignity. Mm -hmm. And at times of conflict, we are at our worst. The three most common behaviors that destroy relationships, and I put them in ABC order, starting with A, absolutes. And that's fight and flight when we get into the I'm right, therefore you are wrong. And it becomes a my way or the highway response pattern. Oh gosh, how many times have organization imploded because managers' egos <laughs> got in the way and people could only see their way as the right way? Mm -hmm. B, we do this, we blame. And instead of talking about someone missing a deadline, we tell them it's all their fault. We direct blame. This is such a concern in the business world that I've just created a short video series with, I think, four or five short five-minute videos in how to reframe blame to responsibility. Matter of fact, I'm posting those on LinkedIn. So connect with me on LinkedIn or email me, and I'll be glad to share that um, video, video series with you. Blame is a serious problem. Quite often, it's irrelevant and unfair. You see, rarely is a single person at fault. Breakdowns tend to be the result of a number of things. Sometimes what people are doing, sometimes what they're not doing. And blame distracts us from finding solutions. Lastly, see character attack. This is where instead of addressing a missed deadline, we attack the character of a person. And it, it, it's like punching someone. You can't unpunch someone. <laughs> this is pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear from some of you. Please head to your, um, head to your, there's a Q&A. Go to that Q&A box. And I'd love to hear some examples that you've seen, that you've experienced, that people have conversed with you that are challenging workplace behaviors. They could be any of, um, here's, here's some examples. Could be missed deadlines. Could be someone late, repeatedly late. They could be performance gaps. How about excuses? Tell me about some excuses, examples of blame. You may have heard negative comments from people. Um, gossip, another, uh, another video series that I've created as a resource. Sometimes it might not be what people are saying, but what about rolling of the eyes? Mm -hmm. What about picking up their cell phone and texting in the middle of your speaking? Yeah. You know, Lori, all of these things that you've mentioned so far are you know, at one point you said you referred to it as the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And all of these behaviors are the elephant in the room. And I think that over time, we start thinking that we need to just suck it up or just look the other way or just go along with it because it's not polite to get into any kind of disagreement or, or any kind of challenge in the workplace. And yet it's not challenging. It is learning how to have an important conversation. It's learning how do you have those conversations in the workplace that are still respectful and get to the bottom line and, and root out the bad behavior. And, and if we are so busy covering it up, Right. We're not going to ever get that, you know, because mm -hmm. like I said, to go back to the elephant in the room, all of this exists. It just does. It does. Mm -hmm. it, it does. And sometimes it's knee jerk. Sometimes there's patterns. If we look at our political world, 
communication has eroded and it's about contention mm -hmm. and um, just democracy invites difference of opinion. Therefore, there's going to be conflict, but how do we navigate the conversations? How do we give room for hearing different perspectives? So that expands us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't um, narrow us. And I've, I've heard it said, Patty, that the worst behavior a manager, and I believe or anyone, tolerates becomes a workplace norm. Yes. And so when we avoid those, um, if people become what I call frequent flyers <laughs> and they get into patterns and it kills the workplace culture. And oftentimes it's the people with another job offer in their back pocket are the ones that we lose, right. We're left with the problem. And I believe many people would be open to stepping up and addressing the issues, but they, we, we've not told, shown people how. We've told them to, we've told them to speak up, but we haven't shown them how. So learning how to do it safely, to bring awareness without um, destroying the dignity of another person, right. but bringing awareness. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, like you said, they, they will become, these behaviors will become the norm, yeah. which does set the culture of that company. It's what you, it's what you become accustomed to. And it, and that that's all culture is. And it is, it's behaviors, mm -hmm. behaviors of the people. It is not what, it's not what's posted on the board, um, on our value statement. I mean, Enron taught us that. So, <laughs> and, um, but I think for, organizations to understand it's not enough to tell people to speak to these it's not enough to have policies how do you speak up when the policies are broken and how are we modeling that so how do we train people quite often we say we value different opinions but Oftentimes the behavior that we see is we attack people with differing opinions. And how do we say our opinions without um, having those come across as absolute? So, right. right. Yeah. So with that, um, because unmet needs result in conflict and at times of conflict, we are at our worst. That's why we need to train ourselves to effectively respond. And to do this, I believe that people need the skill to do that. And that's something you can develop. And that's why I create a framework for people to implement at those difficult times. And along with those skills, the tools to bring out, to have the language to be able to articulate their concerns. And I think we also need the practice. It's not enough, uh, you can't, you don't learn how to communicate by reading a book. <laughs> so any more than you learn how to ride a bike by a manual, you get out and you do it. So I found that particularly with coaching people, as they start to step up, have these conversations, they overcome fears, they learn how to um, ad make it safe when defensiveness erupts that it with those three combined steps people truly transform and what once you've learned to ride the bike <laughs> you just find it becoming automatic pilot right. so, so today so much for about telling Today, I am going to demonstrate my safe conversation communication framework, as well as show you the language needed for having a safe conversation. And this safe conversation will be between these two people. On the right is Sophie, and she is going to voice her concern to Olivia on the left. And that is that she has felt both interrupted and dismissed by Olivia. And Sophie has had um, communication coaching with me. She is going to implement that 
my safe conversation framework in carrying out this conversation. And here is the framework. She will open up the conversation with positive wants. What she wants for Olivia, and that's different than what she wants from her. <laughs> And she will not open it up with, I want you to stop interrupting and dismissing me. Instead, she will make it safe to have this conversation by talking about what she wants for Olivia. Watch how she talks about Olivia's success, as well as having a positive relationship with her. When she opens up with that, people are going to be far more likely to listen and become less defensive. Then she will identify what it was that Olivia did or said that is a concern to her. And she will, she will have that in a quick sentence. Too often women, I believe, are crucified because people want to know in a quick sentence what their issue is. They don't want a story. And so I have found that women can increase their communication ability by getting tight on what it is that is their point of concern. So watch how she does this. She will also use an I message. She knows that if you say when you do this, starting with you is going to create defensive. So watch how she crafts that as an I message. When I heard you, and then quickly the impact how it came across to her, what were the consequences on her. And it won't take her but 30 seconds to open up with those three. Then she's going to try, move it to a dialogue. She's going to ask, um, well, she would you know, typically ask Olivia to share a perspective. And don't worry, Olivia's going to jump in and do that at any time if it the conversation breaks down, becomes defensive, then she is going to be ready and watch how she will acknowledge Olivia's concerns and then move to clarify what it is she wants. And she will end with an agreement. Arguments um, <laughs> do not end successfully quite often because they just are an argument. There's no agreement that comes out as a result. So that is the framework. Enough of the telling. Let's listen in and watch and hear how Sophie carries out a safe conversation. She's going to open it up with positive wants. Again, what she wants for Olivia their relationship. She can't even communicate what she wants for her. Here we go. Olivia, I want us to have a positive working relationship and to have open and honest conversations that support each other. Okay, pretty safe. To support us in successfully working together, I'd like to talk with you about something that happened today during our virtual meeting. And I thought it was important to let you know it's COVID. <laughs> These conversations may not be able to happen as much face to face, but they need to happen screen to screen. So she will now identify action. And remember, watch how she keeps this tight. She's not telling a story. She's not going into detail, but just the crux of what happened. Here we go. During our brainstorming session, while I was sharing my suggestion of an employee recognition program, here she goes. I heard you jump in and say, too complicated, next idea. She uses the actual words. And what was the impact? Hearing you say this, I felt interrupted and shut down. It came across to me like you were not interested in hearing my ideas. Notice how she used that I message. I felt interrupted and shut down. That sounds so different than you have no right to interrupt me and shut down my ideas. And here, 
it came across to me. She is not attacking, but she is saying, this is how it came across to me. And bringing awareness, sometimes people may do certain acts out of pattern without thinking or realizing the impact they have. Again, it's easy to speak your own mind without hearing other people. Now watch how Olivia responds. Sophie, what you don't know is that the last time we implemented a recognition program, it failed big time. Managers complained that it was too cumbersome. Instead of building a positive culture, the outcome was negativity. Okay, Sophie has just gained an understanding of what motivated Olivia's response and led her to feeling shut down and interrupted. So watch how she will acknowledge that, but she is not going to let go of having it understood that a change is needed. So watch how she hears and acknowledges, but yet is heard on her issue of concern. Wow, I now understand your concern given negative past experiences. She understands why Olivia gonna shut down that conversation and watch how she will clarify. I believe it's possible to identify what was lacking in the earlier program to make needed adjustments and implement a manageable program that results in positive outcomes. So she's heard and what she was going to propose was different. Yet again, her main concern was feeling interrupted and dismissed. So how does she get a recognition and agreement moving forward on that and watch how she does. May I count on you to hold off on evaluating my ideas until I've had the opportunity to describe those. So see how she steps into recognizing Olivia's concern, but yet she then returns back to, as we're working together, getting listening and not you know, avoiding shutting down. Now, what I'd like to do, it's not enough to be told you need to communicate, but how do you learn a framework for doing that? So what I'd like you to do right now, grab a piece of paper and I'm going to walk you through, a, I'm gonna call it a mini lesson on how you can prep for a difficult conversation that you could make into a safe conversation. So think about a, um, an issue that you have a concern, something that you would like to um, let a person know that the impact of what they are doing, saying is negatively impacting you and you'd like to influence positive change. So think about a conversation and keep it with an adult. Think about um, examples could be maybe any of what we talked about the examples before, miss deadline, performance gap, maybe something that somebody is doing physically, rolling of the eyes. Um, maybe you've heard a comment such as, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> somebody who's late. So select your issue of concern and think, first of all, what do you want for this person, for the relationship? as a result of having this conversation, not just what you want from them, a change, but what kind of a um, healthy, positive relationship do you want? And I want you to write that down. Grab your pencil, paper. The model I gave in the example was, 
I want us to have a positive working relationship. So take a minute, write down what is a positive want for this person, this relationship. And I'll give you about a minute. You know what I really like about this model, Lori, first of all, I love models because they, they make it easy for you to yeah. follow instead of trying mm -hmm. to think about it on the fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the that this is really focused. I like this difference in the for versus the from, mm -hmm. because you're keeping the relationship front and central. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we will you'll end with a from, mm -hmm. but you don't want to open with that right. because it's it's then not about the relationship. Right. And healthy relationships are core. So, so thank you. I just, I, a, a structure is what really helped me. Mm -hmm. You can, um, and sometimes people will say, well, Lori, I don't have the courage to speak up. Well, I think it's more about the skill. So what I do is I help provide a framework and that can help them develop the language. And then they develop the skill as they start to use it. Right. So positive wants, number one, then what is, what is the action? What is this person saying or doing that is negatively impacting you or others? What did the person do or what did the person not do? Mm -hmm. It could be about a performance. Um, I was expecting you to have the project completed um, two days ago. Also, always a good idea to open that up with an I statement. And here was the example I use. When I heard you jump in and say, too complicated, next idea. So... So take a minute, write yours down. And important to um, telling someone you disrespected me is, is more of a judgment and an attack. But what people need to hear is what words were said that caused you to feel disrespected. People can, um, are going to oh, it will open up an argument on whether something is considered respectful or disrespectful. Right. But using the actual words helps people to understand. And it's real possible that what someone will find disrespectful Someone else will not. Right. So cultures are, are different. The language we use is quite different. So identify the action, what was said, spoken, done, not done. And then what was the impact on you? How were you affected? How did it come across? What's at risk because of this action behavior? And the example that was given was, I felt interrupted and shut down. It came across to me like you were not interested in hearing my ideas. So take a minute, write down the impact, what this person is doing, how it impacted you. Yeah, I like this, the wording of this, because again, it's, it's not attacking, it's this is what I heard and this is how it felt, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. it, it kind of leaves open. It, it is inviting conversation, like you said, you know, you're inviting that conversation to come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Patty, we, <laughs> we do take in, we perceive things according to our perspective, according to our experiences. And um, I've heard it said that we will not cease making judgments until the day the coffin is sealed shut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
when we can learn to frame our um, language to getting understanding, we will be far more effective. <laughs> yeah. So use those three and you've opened up a conversation. And, and then you typically want to invite the other person to give their perspective. Now, sometimes if you just wanted them to know what happened, how it came across, then maybe you're done. Mm -hmm. If the other person has a different perspective, you want to see where they are, um, then you may invite the conversation. In the example I gave, Olivia jumped in and said, well, you don't understand. We tried an employee recognition program. It fell big time. So Sophie didn't have to invite. It just came. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking with someone and you want to hear their perspective and you want to have a dialogue about it, then asking some safe questions. Uh, uh, question is sometimes a gentle invitation to get a discussion going make sure you want to hear it though and that you're open to it not defending your perspective but hearing theirs and you could open it up with please share your perspective um how do you see this i'd like to hear what you are thinking so inviting conversation particularly when there are differences of opinion this works great for those times where you don't just want your concern to be heard, but where you want to have conversations. Because sometimes hearing differing opinions and ideas is going to help us to get the best solution, the best answers. And in the case of Sophie and Olivia, it was important for her to get an agreement moving forward. If it's about a performance issue, you want to get an agreement moving forward. So at that point, you, um, you want to ask for that. And I believe that Sophie had, had asked for it. In, in the future, can you agree to hold off on evaluating until we finished brainstorming and until I've had a chance to share my ideas. So again, this is getting agreement is the way to bring about change. And it may be that you may want to make an agreement to how after listening to the person share their perspective, you might want to offer them an agreement on what you will do differently in the future. So, Safe conversation skills are learnable. It's not just about building the courage and overcoming fear, but it's learning to have communication skills and be ready in those awkward and conflict-filled moments. So, and I know it's possible to learn these skills because I have trained managers, business professionals in how to have those. So I want you to know that with training, with coaching, it's possible to effectively communicate at those times when opinions differ, mm -hmm. when people become defensive, <laughs> when it's possible to build more positive working relationships. And this we do by addressing workplace behaviors that break them down. When we avoid talking about behaviors that break down relationships we become like that pop can shaken <laughs> finally it's released and it explodes <laughs> we don't want to be there and by you can elevate your leadership to the next level you see it's the person who can describe problems without laying blame that is identified as the leader. Mm -hmm. And this can happen when you implement a communication framework that transforms you. Yes. So anyone on today, if this content has resonated with you,
if you even took time to put together your own dialogue and i would love to connect with you and anyone who is here who reaches out i will be glad to give you a 30 minute safe conversation consultation it's complimentary all you need to do is go to my website at www conversations in the workplace you'll see my um, home page picture and under that picture there's a let's talk button just click on that and once you click on that you'll be taken to um my uh, place where you can sign up schedule a 30-minute consult with me so go ahead do that you'll also find um uh, articles and resources there on my website so i'd love to help you step up to your first um, difficult conversation and to make it into a safe conversation and because in life while conflict is inevitable relational combat is optional and so with that i believe patty why don't we um why don't we move to q a let's see um uh, let me invite everyone to go to the q a box and if you have any questions if today's presentation webinar has stemmed some questions if you have challenging team dynamics um yeah here's one for you laurie um what if the conflict is with someone who is is your superior oh very good man <laughs> what you want to do is manage up and when we in managing up you want to make it as safe as possible and so begin by opening with the positive wants why are you bringing this up my it's something like i would like us to have i'd like us to be able to talk about anything that can help to improve our working relationship mm -hmm. talk about how you're bringing this up because it could increase their success how you're seeing something that you believe might be negatively impacting their success and that's why you're bringing it up if you um i have i have done a webinar and it is on managing up and i walk people it is through this this same framework but i add some extra components such as being vul vulnerable and let them know hey you know it's a little awkward for me to bring up something with my boss, but because I believe talking about this may increase your success, I'm willing to, to step up and take that risk. And I, I hope you will um, listen and understand that I'm bringing this up because I think it can improve um, both of our success. Okay. So be vulnerable tell why and one thing that's important when you are managing up not just coming with problems but are you coming with a suggestion for a solution that will increase success um if you are interested in that managing up webinar i believe i have posted that on um, youtube so e email me ask for it i'll be glad to to share that with you um, so laurie here's another one uh, do you have any suggestions when your only associate is also your spouse <laughs> oh oh gosh if i could i wish i could send send you a virtual hug <laughs> it's it is double it is double jeopardy um and i possibly recognize that what you want to do is make it safe 
talk about um, positive wants. I want to not only improve our working relationship, but I think this can, this talking about this can also improve our marriage and open communication. And, and you might address that. I think these conversations are going to be difficult because we're not just coworkers, but we're married. And so um, I want us to be able to talk about this without hurting each other. I want it to be just a conversation on um, how do we understand and how, what can help us work more effectively together. One thing that's important is that knowing that you're bringing it up because you want to improve the relationship, not that you want to break it apart. Yeah. It's like and sort of the way you put the framework together in general is relationship first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what with, oh, one thing, my spouse and I, um, I have found, and this is just personal, um, I have found that I'm the type that uh, I want to talk about it right away. <laughs> my, um, my spouse, I have found that he may not want to talk about it for a while. And so we've, we've made um, kind of this agreement that anything that a person brings up, we can talk about then, or the other person can say, I'd like time to think about this and talk about it. And so we give 24 hours, but it is the expectation that the one who's wanted time, they are to, they are to bring it up within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So, Anyway, that that's helped that's helped this marriage relationship. Uh, Lori, here's a, another one. Um, I have a coworker who has a very foul mouth, mm -hmm. and he's never been corrected for mm -hmm. this, so it's become the norm with him. Ooh, but okay. I am very offended. Okay. Okay. What I would. Um, let me just give some examples and I'm going to use this framework because I want to have a positive relationship with you and I I want to maintain respect for you I'm I want to let you know that when you curse cuss say certain things mm -hmm that they come across to me as offensive. And I, I want you to know that. You might talk about other concerns. I'm also concerned that this can create a perception of you being less professional. Mm -hmm. And I want to know that you would help support my success as well as I would support your success. Now, you can have that conversation with that person. One thing that you could also consider doing is without gossiping, but you could also in um, with others or in a meeting, well, think think about this possibility: is letting people know that you really want a safe workplace where there's professionalism and where you know foul words are not used, and that you are willing to when when people use language that you find offensive or disrespectful you are going to speak up to it and you'll be speaking up to it and saying this and you could say if there are others who share this opinion then i would also invite you to speak up to it now a good manager 
who was skilled in this, if that concern was brought up, could pull a team together and say, there's been a request that we really look at the language we're using. And I would like to invite some conversation here. What kind of conversation do we want? What do we consider professional? What do we consider unprofessional? And let's make some agreements here how we will, how we will talk within this workplace. Sometimes the language people use are their daily language. Yeah. And, but unless parameters are set up and unless we're really clear and become clear on what's okay and what's not okay, everyone is going to operate with their own, um, my right to speak my way instead of how do we honor professionalism and de define that. Yeah. That's good. Um, and sort of in keeping with that idea about, you know, respecting the entire group, you know, or, or coming up with our group norms outside of what an individual is comfortable with. What do you, you mentioned earlier about blame and how that's kind of one of those triggers. Mm -hmm. What about um, when blame happens in a group setting? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what can we do? Okay, good. yeah, good question. Well, and what's, what's hard um, with blame is to, you want to reframe blame to responsibility. And um, this is great timing because I am creating a, a video series right now and I'm going to start posting it, I believe this week on LinkedIn. So connect with me on LinkedIn, you can, um, access that. If you email, I'll be glad to send it to you when um, I give you all, I think there are five, five links to those. With blame, you want to reframe it to responsibility. And you want to move from, you, you, we, you can't control other people, but you can control how you respond. So with blame, you want to reframe it to responsibility and say, I know we can't control so-and-so, but what I do want you to focus on now is what you can do to effectively respond. With blame, it's hard to, how do you, learning to discern between what is maybe skirted responsibility and what is, legitimate concerns and so looking at those when it's skirted responsibility you move them to what is their responsibility in this situation not what did the other person do but what can they do how can they get that project completed what do people need that they may not be receiving when it's legitimate concerns we're going to have to pull together and we need to figure out, first of all, what happened. So what's con what happened? Where did things break down? Look at them, what's contributed to this? What have I done? What have other people done? What has not been done? We want to look at, is there a process here that isn't working that needs to be different? And in order to solve this problem, what needs to happen? And then defining ownership moving forward. So working the group through that process. If somebody can step up to reframe it and, and say, hey, I, I'm willing to explore what's happened, what's not happening, what needs to happen. I'm willing to look at what I've contributed, done and not done. Can we move the conversation from blaming to examining? Because some things, sometimes things aren't even about fault. They're about finding solutions. Mm -hmm. And whoever can step up and bring that awareness, my gosh, defensiveness mm -hmm. goes down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we, we get out of fight and flight defend to we, you've just taken from blame to curiosity. 
Right, right. That's excellent. That's a that's a great approach. It's hard. There are multi steps there, and that's why I've I've created really the five little video um, video clip. So, Lori, this has been a great conversation in our workplace here today, and I really appreciate you uh, bringing your wisdom to us and sharing this with us. Like, like I mentioned earlier, I love a framework because I like something that's easy to to help me remember how to follow. So again, share with us how we can get in touch with you, how we can work with you, um, your contact information before we end today. Oh, well, thank you, Patty. Um, again, and I think it's, it's on your screen, um, www conversationsintheworkplace.com. If you want to set up a consultation with me, just hit on that let's talk button. And also go to, when you go to my website, articles you will find, I have published four or five articles which will give strategies. Those are great resources. I am continually um, making resources. As I said, right now I'm working on the reframe blame, which I, um, those people who share their emails, I regularly send those out. So connect with me via LinkedIn, share your email with me and I will um, follow up and I will continue to share my resources. And just a reminder, issues can be respectfully addressed one safe conversation at a time. That's awesome. What a great way to end it. And I want to thank those of you that joined us live today. And uh, this webinar will be posted on the connectedwomenofinfluence.com website. So be, be sure to share it with people that you wish had been here to hear this, this conversation um, or share it with your colleagues just in, in general, because this was very useful information, very helpful. And again, Lori, I thank you so much. Uh, it was Lori Reichow with Conversations in the Workplace. And stay tuned, you guys. We've got 2021 coming up, thank goodness. And things are going to be even better in the coming year. So thanks again to everybody that was with us today. And thanks, Lori. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>